Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to iFactner.com video tutorials. And today we are going to discuss about computer networking. Guys and girls, this is tutorial number one. And we are going to discuss what do we mean by computer networking. If you ask me what is a computer network, my answer would be that if you join together a bunch of computers, then you have got a computer network. When I talk about computers, then I mean desktop computers, your laptop, a tablet, PC, computer, your mobile phone can be a part of that computer network, uh, your printer can be a part of that computer network, your smart TV can be a part of that computer network, and your game consoles, for example, uh, your Xbox or PlayStation can be a part of a computer network. And all these devices which are a part of computer network are called nodes. These are all nodes of a, maybe nodes of the computer network. So guys and girls, we need two things for computer networks, computers and some medium to join those computers. So this medium is called communication medium. So we can use different types of communication media to join computer networks and the most common being cables or should I say copper cables. Networking cables are used to join computers into a network. We can also use fiber optics to join computers together. And uh, nowadays, Wi-Fi, a wireless technologies or wireless media is becoming very common to join, to make computer networks. We can use uh, Wi-Fi or WiMAX to make computer networks. We can use uh, satellite technology to make computer networks. We can use mobile technology to use computer to create computer networks. We can create computer networks with the help of microwaves or radio waves, etc. etc. So these are the examples of most common media that is used to create computer network. This is called a communication media. So guys and girls, you would be asking yourself, why do we need to create or develop computer network? What is the purpose of computer networks? Simple answer is the data and resource sharing. So guys and girls, what do I mean by data? Data may be your documents, Another example of data is picture, images. Another example is videos, for example, videos on YouTube, this video tutorial. And all the things which you share on internet are examples of data. So we need computer networks or we need networks to share data among different devices. And the second purpose of computer networks is 
resource sharing. So what do I mean by resource sharing? Let us suppose we have got three computers, but we have got only one printer. So now we can connect printer with one of the computers and we can connect the other two computers with the computer which is connected to our printer and then we can all share the resource, this resource which is printer among all the three computers which is which are the part of computer network. Another example of resource sharing is the internet connection. Let us suppose we have got uh, a laptop, a tablet and uh, a smart TV at home but we have got only one internet connection and usually we at home and usually we share the internet connection resource uh, one internet connection resource with three devices so the purpose of computer network is to share the resources and to share the data so thank you very much guys and girls for joining me for ifactner.com video tutorial series you can read more about computer networks on my website ifactner.com in the next tutorial we will be discussing about the types of computer networks and those types are LAN, MAN and WAN so guys and girls See you in the next tutorial. Until then, take care. Bye bye. Hello, guys and girls. Welcome to ifactner.com video tutorials. Today, we are going to discuss about types of computer networks. We can uh, say that we can classify computer networks according to different types. We can say that uh, we have got a home-based computer network. We have got, got an office-based computer network. We have got a branch-based computer network. And we have got suppliers-based computer network, etc. and etc. But one very easy way to classify the computer networks is according to the size of the network and according to this classification we can classify the computer networks into three different networks based on their sizes number one is LAN number two is MAN and number three is WAN and LAN is the smallest and it is called as it is known as local area network then comes the man we are not talking about the man we are talking about the man in computer terms and it means metropolitan area network and on number three we have got wide area network so let's start with LAN LAN means local area network the network which is based in a building for example if you have a small network in your house then you have got local area network let us suppose we have got a desktop computer and uh, your brother has a laptop computer your sister has a tablet and your dad has a mobile phone. But there is all, only one printer available in the house and we all want to utilize that printer. An easy way is that we connect the printer with our computer and all the other devices are connected to 
our computer. Now our computer is acting as a server, as a print server in this case and now we can all utilize the resource that is the printer with the help of our local AI network and we can all also develop a LAN in our house to share data. Let us suppose we have got a smart TV and we have a, got a recorder and we record films on that recorder. Later on we want to access those films with our computer or laptop or tablet and then we can connect all these devices to that recorder and access the data that is films or, or uh, any programs on the TV that has been recording, recorded on our recorder and this also gives us the example of local area network and in this case we are sharing data. In the first case we were sharing resource that is a printer and in the second case we are sharing data that is their films. So guys and girls uh, similarly if we have got a small office that is in one building then that office and different computers in that office has been connected together then it is also an example of LAN. So LAN is a local area network usually confined to a single business and uh, next on we will be discussing about MAN. Thank you very much for joining me in this tutorial. I see you in next tutorial and if you would like to read more about computer networking then you can visit ifechner.com. Take care. Please subscribe. Bye. Hey, hey, hey. Welcome to ifechner.com computer networking tutorials and we are discussing about the types of computer networking or computer networks and we have already discussed about LANs which are the local area networks and we are will now be discussing about MANs or Metropolitan Area Networks. So MAN, MANs got their name from Metropolitan uh, uh, Area and usually a Metropolitan is uh, can be considered as a city and if we have got different buildings in that city and we have got different computers in those buildings and if we join those computers with any communication medium then we have created a MAN. So a MAN can be considered as a network within a city or in a metropolitan area. So why do we need to create MAN? So let's suppose we have got a city and we have got a university in that city and that university has three campuses in this city uh, and those campuses would like to share resources among themselves, they would like to share data plus resources. So what would they do? They will join themselves with the help of a communication medium. And this is how MAN or Metropolitan Area Network is created. And that communication medium can be just simple wires, Wi-Fi or we can do it with the help of the satellite or even with the help of mobile phones or point-to-point -point, uh, uh, 
microwaves or with the help of the radio waves we can also create man another example is uh, of those of banks let's suppose we have a bank which has three branches in a metropolitan area and all those branches would like to share customer data among themselves so what to would they do they will create a man and in this case they would create a secure man because customer data is important similarly if we have got two hospitals and in a city and they would like to share patient data then they can also create man with the help of the communication media to exchange patient files or data about the patient so usually the specification of mans uh, depend upon the distance so if we have got a metropolitan area and uh, of less than 30 miles and we have created a network for example between different travel agents of airline industry then this is also an example of man and if the network is greater than 30 miles uh, radius or area then we will not call that network as man because in that case it would be a wide area network which is WAN and we will be discussing about WAN in our next tutorial so guys and girls thank you very much for joining me for ifechner.com video tutorials if you would like to read more about MANS or if you would like to see this tutorial in different languages then please visit ifechner.com and uh, in the next tutorial we are going to discuss about WAN. Thank you very much. Please subscribe. Take care. Bye. Hey, hey, hey. Guys and girls, welcome to ifactioner.com video tutorials. And we are discussing computer networking tutorials. And in this tutorial, which is tutorial number four, we are going to discuss about wide area networks, WANs. We have already discussed about LANs in tutorial number two and about MANs in tutorial number three. And now we are going to discuss about WANs, Wide Area Networks. WAN stands for Wide Area Networks. And let us suppose that we have got a big country and that country has got four cities. And all those four cities have got mans and lands. So now, and the distance between those cities is greater than 30 miles. Now, if we join the mans between two cities or even mans between all the cities, then what we are creating is called a van or wide area network. These can be joined as we have discussed with the help of the communication media. And those can be wire based or wireless based or even satellite based communication medium. And uh, we joined uh, them to share resources. Uh, so let us take an example. Let's suppose we have got two banks, branches of a bank in one city, headquarter of a bank in another city, and a branch of a bank in city number three. Now, all the branches would like to share the information with the head office so we can create a network between the branch offices 
and the headquarter and if the distance between them is greater than 30 miles then this is an example of a van similarly if we have got a, a business which has got uh, uh, different uh, uh, factories and showrooms in different cities and they would like to share data among themselves then this is also an example of a van and guys and girls do you know which is the biggest van of the world yes you are right it is internet and internet is called the network of networks because usually um, about 95% of the computer networks of the world they are joined together with the help of the fiber optics, satellite technologies, ISPs and all the mesh we will be discussing about it they are, they are all interconnected and they form the biggest network of the world that is called the internet Inter, sorry about that they are called this is called this network this is biggest network is called internet so thank you very much uh, guys and girls for joining me for this computer tutorial computer networking tutorials and we have discussed about the types of the computer networks and we will be uh, continuing our discussion of computer networks in our next tutorial thank you very much if you would like to uh, read more about computer networks then please visit ifactner.com I have given examples uh, in in my blogs so take care bye bye hey 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 guys and girls welcome to ifactner.com video tutorials and we are discussing about computer networking this is tutorial number five and we will be discussing about intranets we have already discussed about internet we have defined internet as the network of networks that means that all the networks well, or most of the networks in the world they are connected together and they form the internet the internet is the biggest network of the world or we may say that intra internet is the network between organizations and we are part of those organizations but what about the networks that are intended only for the usage or for the purposes of within the organization then those networks which are only intended for the usage between the organization that network is called intranet you may think of intranet as the scaled down version of internet that is in bigger organizations the internet provide all the services of the internet for example web based services mail based services FTP based services collaboration tools communication tools they provide all the scaled down uh, services of the internet but they are only intended for the employees of that particular organization and in most cases the external entities cannot access those 
services that are provided through intranet. So what are the benefits of intranet? It can increase uh, employees productivity because it can provide better communication tools to the employees, better collaborative tools to the employees, and other services and resource sharing uh, for interaction and data sharing, information sharing, etc. So, uh, uh, when organizations may provide a little window in the internet for the external entities, for example, journal public or to their suppliers or to their consumers, that is, they may share some information of the intranet through that window. And when organizations do share that information with the general public, suppliers, consumers, or other stakeholders, then we may call those windows or those networks as extranets. And we will be discussing about extranets in our next tutorial. So guys and girls, thank you very much for uh, joining me. And uh, if you would like to read more about intranets, extranets, and computer networking, then please visit ifactner.com. Okay, I see you in next tutorial. Take care. Bye-bye. Hello, hello, hello. How are you, friends? Fit fine? Let's continue our discussion on extranets. We have already discussed that intranets are intended for the internal usage of the organization. Intranets are the scaled down version for organizations, for the internal use of the organizations. And intranets use the same services of uh, the internet. As of the internet, for example, web-based services, mail-based services, collaboration-based services, and all the other services of the internet, they usually companies use in their intranets. And smaller companies only use websites for, for their intranets operation. And when companies decide to share all the information or some part of that information with the external stakeholders, then that window through which the external stakeholders can access the information is called extranet. So extranet is the May, uh, is the extension of the internet and extranet can uh, share all the information of the intranet or only uh, some part of that information. So let us take an example. Let's suppose we have a car manufacturer and it has got uh, intranet and uh, that intranet is uh, gathers information from the factory floor and it provides that information to the supplier so that they can provide the supplies. For example, let's suppose our supplier one is a tire manufacturer and after logging into the in uh, into the extranet window, he can see 
how many tires are required by the car manufacturer. And uh, supplier 2 can access the information about the mirrors, but he cannot access the information about the tires. So uh, the uh, information that is provided through extranet is secure and usually only uh, users or the stakeholders who have got the username and password to access that information can access that information. So extranets are usually secured and they are only the part of the extranet. So thank you very much uh, guys and girls for joining me uh, this tutorial on extranets. Ex uh, I fact you can uh, visit ifactner.com to know more about uh, extranets. Uh, we have discussed about internet which is network of networks. Intranet uh, uh, uses the services of the internet but for internal organization use and extranets basically are the windows or the extension of the intranets through which external stakeholders uh, can access that information. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye-bye. Hey, hey, hey. Friends, I welcome you to ifactner.com video tutorial series and we are discussing about computer networking and uh, in this tutorial we will explore different parts of computer networks. So friends, uh, let's make things simple and uh, we will be discussing uh, about home-based computer networks. So let us suppose we have got uh, a desktop PC uh, our brother has got a laptop our dad has got a tablet he's a techie dad and our mom she has got a mobile phone a smart mobile phone so friends now consider that we would like to access internet we can do it in a couple of ways but uh, the because we are discussing about home networks that means that we would like to share the internet connection resource we have already discussed that uh, the purpose of building the network is to share the resources and share the data and in this uh, scenario internet connection is a resource so uh, friends usually uh, we uh, someone will tell you that we need a modem and a switch and a router and other stuff to connect to the internet but in our case let us suppose we have got a triple play router a triple play router is a device which can provide the telephony services, the internet connection services, and the TV services built in one device. So, our uh, triple play router can access the internet. Let's suppose uh, we have got a fiber optics connection. So, our triple play router is connected with the help of the fiber optics and and our triple play router has got uh, a built-in switch and it has got ports so we can connect our computer with the help of a networking cable or a networking you can say wire and this triple play router is a very good device and it has got also the Wi-Fi medium. So our other devices, mobile phone, our laptop and uh, our tablet can use this router or connect to this router which is then connected to the internet. So now in this case our devices are sharing a resource that is an internet connection 
and I have already told that uh, we can connect uh, our telephone with uh, in this router and we can also connect uh, uh, a recorder to our smart tel te television so we can see movies on on IP and we can see all the programs on IP so uh, now if you see that there are different end nodes in this diagram and all these nodes they, 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 these, these devices are called nodes in terms of computer networking and uh, we use fiber optics wire and wireless to communicate so we use three types of medium media fiber optics cable and Wi-Fi and these are called therefore communication medium or communication media this is nodes are first part of our network communication media is second part and usually these router switches and uh, modems they are they are called the third part and usually these are also the nodes but they are classified as networking devices so this is the simple uh, uh, diagram and if you would like to complicate it then let's suppose we have got a Wi-Fi printer and we can connect it uh, with a USB cable to our desktop and other devices they can send the command through Wi-Fi so this is also on the printer is also a part of the node so uh, friends we have discussed it our uh, they have got three parts of computer networks nodes our PC laptops etc communication medium wires Wi-Fi fiber optics and network components routers switches etc and in this case we have discussed uh, about the triple play router so it has a built-in modem, it has built-in switch, it has built-in Wi-Fi modem, wireless modem, and all the stuff. And in the next tutorial, we are going to discuss about office-based office -based networks, simple office-based network. So see you in the next tutorial. Take care. Bye. Hey, guys. Let's continue our discussion on uh, parts of computer uh, networks and uh, in this tutorial number eight, we will be discussing, uh, we will be exploring a simple office-based network. And uh, let us suppose that uh, in an office, we would like to share an internet connection. And it's a little older office. So we have got modem. And the modem is attached uh, to router our router has attached is attached to a server which has got hard disk so it is called a storage server so all the office work is stored on this uh, server and we have got uh, a printer attached to the server, a laser printer. Therefore, this server is also acting as a print server. So it's a print plus storage server. If you do not know what a server is, then you may think of a server as a very powerful device, a very powerful computer, which serves other computer in the network. So friends, uh, let's suppose our router is attached to a switch because it's an older network and we would like to explore different parts of computers networks. Therefore, we have got a switch in our network diagram. And
and then we have got two workstations you may think of a workstation as a simple computers but uh, they have less computing power and usually they use the computing power or the storage plus print services of the server therefore we are we uh, call them as workstations they can be desktops laptops tablets etc so we call them workstations and they both are connected to a switch and our boss has got a laptop and he is connected to the network via router and he is using the wifi signals to connect to the server so friends we have already discussed that these this laptop these workstations this switch this router this modem our server and our printer they are all called as nodes and this uh, copper cable through which our modem is connected to the internet this cable copper cable this copper cable these wifi signals this copper cable they are all used for communication between different devices so that different devices can communicate with each other therefore we call them communication media and most of the people when we talk about networking they think of modems routers and switches switches also uh, uh, switches as uh, as uh, as the as the networking components and they think that networking is all only uh, related to all only these components but in this network diagram we have seen that networking consists of network on simple network consists of nodes and communication medium plus these nodes uh, some of these nodes are used for networking therefore they are called let's suppose networking devices so friends we have explored that a simple network consists of nodes for example workstations computers laptops mobiles tablets and communication media for example wifi wireless signal microwaves copper wire etc and they also consist of networking devices so oh friends thank you very much for joining me for this tutorial see you in next tutorial uh, and please visit ifekner.com and subscribe to my channel take care bye hey guys what's up we are talking about computer networking and in this tutorial we will explore about client servers and hosts not hosts but hosts remember there are no hosts in computer world so friends we have already discussed that in an office for example in simple networking terms we have got a client and we have got a server a server is a powerful computer which serves the clients in the network so we have got three clients and a server and this server is has got a lot of hard disks space so it acts as an storage server in this case and if we have got a printer attached to this server then this server also acts as a print server 
So, in this architecture, we have got clients and we have got a server. That's why it is called client server architecture. And they may be attached to each other with the help of a switch or a router or maybe if a server has also got a uh, wife so maybe yeah or maybe if we have got a laptop then laptop may be connected to a wireless router to the server so this is how client server architecture works and uh, now the question arises what are the hosts so we have got a client and we have got a server. Let's suppose this is a web server and we have our website on this server. That is, we have got an intranet and we have hosted our website only for the local users, for the internal users of the company on this web server. So this web server actually is right now acting as an host as a host why because we have hosted our web pages on this web server therefore this web server is also known as a web host a client through his browser sends a request to the server the server processes that request and makes a copy of the page or produces a page and sends it back to the client. Similarly, another client makes a, sends a request and this server processes that request. So that's why we call this as host. So guys, we have discussed about client server architecture. What are the clients? What is the server? And we have discussed about client and host. So guys, in the next tutorial, we will be discussing about internet. What is, uh, not what is internet, but how does an internet work? Please subscribe to, subscribe to ifechner.com. See you in the next tutorial. Take care. Bye-bye. Hey, hey, hey. Hello, guys. How are you doing? I welcome you to ifechner.com video tutorial series and uh, we have been discussing about computer networking and in this tutorial we will discuss how does internet work. So guys, uh, one of the main parts of the internet are the clients. For example, we people, we have got our PCs, we have got our tablets, we have got our mobile phones, we have got our laptops, and uh, we have got our smart TVs, and we use the services of the internet. And uh, we also communicate with each other, but through internet. But uh, now the question arises that we always represent this internet as a cloud. So what is it? What is in the in this cloud? On the other side, we have got servers which serves the client. So there can be different servers. They have there are a lot of servers actually. So there can be web servers, SMTP or mail servers, social networking servers, video servers, for example, YouTube. And the example of social networking servers, uh, the sites which I've been using are Facebook, Google Plus, and so on and so forth. So we have got clients and we have got servers and these are two of the major parts of the internet but another important part 
of any network uh, is the communication media and for because internet is such a vast 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 network that it uses all kind of communication medias it uses fiber optics fiber optic cables copper cables satellite and all the other forms of communication media so uh, how does an internet work we take an example of a web server let's suppose we are a client and we would like to visit a page on ifectner.com on our browser we type in and we get a result how this all works we are a client we are connected to let's suppose a router and our router is connected to our ISP internet service provider and our ISP is basically connected may, may be connected to a larger ISP to a backbone service provider and this service provider may be backbone service provider may be connected to different other ISPs and this network works a lot uh, you you have to enlarge this network so there can be different backbone providers there can be different smaller isps and a lot and lot and lot of clients and these isps they have got servers so let's suppose isp3 has got a web server in florida and ifactor.com is hosted on that web server so when we type in our computer then these uh, requests they are converted into packets and they follow different paths these packets follow different paths uh, to reach to the server because they know the address each packet has got an address so our page has been divided into packets and when they reach at the server they are all combined the server interprets them uh, uh, the server uh, works on their request it produces a copy of a page and then it is converted into packets and those packets are sent back uh, 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 with the help of uh, uh, address to different ISPs in the world to different routes so usually they uh, they, they try to follow the shortest possible path and then they reaches uh, at the client and then we are able our browser uh, changes the computer language into the human readable language and then we are able to read the page so this is how the internet in its simplest form works there are a lot of routers uh, uh, connected the a router is connected where the two networks uh, are joined together and there are there may be switches modems and different kinds of uh, not only fiber optics connections but uh, cable connections maybe some uh, uh, isps are connected uh, through satellite they are using satellite communication so it's a lot a lot 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 uh, of machinery in simple terms we have got clients we have got networking equipment plus communication media and we have got servers and these are the major components of internet and this is how internet works thank you guys for joining me for this tutorial I will see you in next tutorial. Take care. Bye bye. Hey guys, welcome to your 11th computer networking tutorials. And today we are going to discuss what is a protocol. So guys, before we start discussing 
the definition of our protocol in computer networking terms, let us understand what is a computer protocol in human life. It would be easier if we understand what is a protocol uh, in human life and then we would be discussing about the protocols in computers lives life. So let's suppose we have got two persons and uh, uh, they would like to communicate with each other. So to start the discussion, uh, person A has to say hi to person uh, B. And if person B is willing uh, to talk to person A, then he would say hello. So this means that person A, uh, A and person B understands each other. And then, they, then person uh, A can ask person B something. For example, can I have a glass of water, please? And if person B has got a glass of water, then he would say sure. And he will give him a glass of, here it is, glass of water. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, here we have seen that person A and person B have followed some types of rules to communicate between, among, between each other. So, uh, first they shake hands or they say, hi, do you understand me? Uh, and person B says, hello, yeah, I understand you because they, 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 they speak the same language. And then person uh, A asks, can I have uh, this thing? And if person B is able to provide that thing, then, uh, then he gives that thing to the person A. Let's suppose that uh, person A is our client in terms of computer and com uh, person B is our server. So clients and servers also have to follow some kinds of rules to communicate each other. First, uh, uh, the client uh, asks, hi, can I connect to you? The server says, hello, yeah, you can connect to me. And then the client say, says, can I uh, get uh, uh, this, for example, web page, ifactner.com slash index.html. And if the person, the server is able to uh, fulfill his request, then he would make a copy of uh, that request and give it to the client. So, we have discussed that protocols are the set of rules for communication among humans and also among computers. And uh, 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 it cannot happen that person A is just coming towards person B and person B, a, 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 a B uh, has already got a glass of water in his hand and he says, hey, take it, take it, take it. And if uh, he doesn't know, so that person A is uh, thirsty or not, therefore, they have to follow some kinds of rules. So this is uh, the simple explanation of protocols. In computer terms, we will uh, continue our discussion on protocols in, uh, in the next tutorial. So, see you guys in next tutorial. Take care. Bye. 
Hey guys, welcome back to iFactionary.com video tutorials and we are discussing about protocols. So guys, let us consider an, uh, another scenario. Let us suppose that we have got two persons, person A and person B and they, 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 are, they are not in the same room but they live at different places. So now uh, uh, the only way to communicate between person A and person B is through with the help of a pigeon. So person A puts uh, a message uh, uh, on the leg of the pigeon and sends it to person B. Let's suppose that message is hi. Person B if a uh, person B understands the message, then he, uh, he, he puts the message on the pigeon and the pigeon flew, uh, flies back uh, with the message, hello. The person uh, uh, A then sends a request. Why a pigeon? Can you please give me a paper? And if person B understands what person A has asked and if he is able to do that, then he gives the paper via the pigeon and says, take it. So friends, uh, as you have seen that these two persons, they, they, uh, they are communicating with each other and they are following some rules, that is, they are following some protocols to communicate with each other. Uh, and we can consider person A as a client and person B as a server. So client uh, says hi, server says hello. Client says, can you please give me a copy of this web page on ifactner.com and if server uh, is able to provide uh, a copy, then he gives it back to the client. So let's just consider now that the client has to send a big request to our server or person B. So then he will use a lot of pigeons because uh, a pigeon can carry a small packet of uh, message and all those pigeons they are trained in such a way that uh, when they reach at the server they reach uh, according to the same number. So if this is uh, packet 1, uh, pigeon 1, and this is packet 2, pigeon 2, then they will reach at the same, in the same order, because they are trained in such a way. So in this case, we can consider in case of, uh, uh, let's suppose, internet or computer networking, we can consider these pigeons as internet protocol packets and uh, they are training to fly and reach server B in the same manner is known as TCP transmission control protocol and these pigeons can fly through different routes but when they reach to person B they are get ordered in the same way in which they were sent by the client so and uh, let's suppose there is a cat uh, in path of this pigeon then he can change his route 
and still it is two person B and adjust itself to the order. So this is called transmission control protocol in the server in the client in, in the internet language. So when a client sends a request to a web server, let's suppose to a server, then that request is sent in forms of smaller packets in, in forms of IP packets and these packets are then follow different routes but due to TCP transmission control protocol they are able to reach the address of the server and they are assembled in the same way and then the server processes that request and uh, in the same cases in the same case makes uh, different packets and those packets are taken care are taken then by TCP which tells them to just follow different paths but when you reach to the client you have to get arranged in this way and then the client browser shows the web page. So uh, for different services on the internet we use different pigeons or we use different protocols. For example for a special web page we use uh, green pigeons. For example for the web we use uh, HTTP hypertext, tra hypertext transfer protocol or if we need uh, secure uh, services then we need HTTPS protocol. We use HTTPS protocol and uh, we can use FTP protocol to transfer bigger files, SMTP for mail and so on and so forth. So we have discussed that for communication between two computers we need set of rules and those rules are called protocols and uh, information on the internet is done through TCP IP protocols. IPs are the packets and TCP tells to where to go and how to assemble at the client at, at, at the receiving end. And uh, friends, if uh, let us suppose that if two persons are in the same room, uh, then they can uh, communicate each other with each other directly. So if two computers are in the local area network, then they, they can uh, use different uh, type of protocols. But if two people are uh, in two series, then they will be needing some other protocol to communicate with each other. And uh, in case of internet, uh, if the client and server are uh, at, in different places, then they use different kinds of protocols. So thank you very much friends for joining me in ifecner.com video tutorials. Please subscribe and I see you in next networking tutorial. Take care. Bye. Hey friends, welcome to ifecner.com computer networking tutorial. Today we are going to discuss about com uh, computer networking topologies and the topic central topic of our discussion would be bus topology. Guys and girls, you can think of a topology as a layout. That is how our computer network is laid out. There can be different kinds of topologies in, in which uh, uh, your computer network can be laid out. Number one is bus topology. Number two is ring topology. Number three is star topology. And uh, you can also have mesh topology. And uh, these are the four major types of topologies we can use to lay out our networks. Star. So, uh, friends, there can be uh, uh, 
physical topologies that is how your network is physically laid out and there can be logical topologies that is how the traffic is basically uh, traffic is uh, the traffic follows certain path to reach to its destination so uh, but for the sake of simplicity friends we will consider that the physical and the logical topology uh, in our example are is same so let's uh, start our discussion about bus technology as uh, 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 bus the word bus uh, depicts that it should be a straight line therefore in the bus topology we have got a straight backbone and our terminals or our nodes that is our PC our laptop our printer our server in the network uh, our workstation they are all connected to that main backbone and uh, in the bus topology we have got terminators at both the ends so how does this bus topology works let's suppose this computer A would like to send a request to com server so it will send a request and that request would go everywhere in the network so it would go to the terminal terminator and the work of the terminator is to terminate the signal it would go to our printer and uh, the printer would say no it's not for me and then uh, the request would go to the laptop which would also say it's not for me then it would go to our server and the server would say yes it is for me and I would honor that request but our traffic would not stop over there it would still go to all the uh, nodes in the network and until and unless it reaches the terminator and this terminator would terminate that traffic or that packet or that signal so this is how uh, traffic uh, travels in, in, in the bus topology so friends now do you see the problem that uh, bus topology is not very efficient And if in the bus topology our terminals, one of our terminals goes down, then that packet or those packets or those that traffic would not terminate uh, at the end and it would bounce back and it would just confuse all other uh, 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 our terminals and it will create congestion and our network may go down and in the bus topology if our backbone uh, is uh, basically cut in the middle then these terminals would not be able to communicate with uh, with each other so backbone is uh, if backbone is hurt then bus topology cannot work so these are the disadvantages of bus topology but there are other there are advantages of bus topology as well the most com the most important one is that it is easy to set up for small computers for small networks and number 2 that it's it uh, it is cost effective that we would need just some wires to make a bus 
topology but uh, uh, nowadays the physical bus topology is not being used but uh, uh, still logical bus topology uh, is being used in many scenarios so thank you very much uh, guys and girls for joining me for this tutorial i will see you in the next tutorial uh, and we will discuss about the ring topology oh wow what a beautiful ring take care bye hey guys welcome to 14th uh, computer networking tutorial from ifactioner.com and today we will discuss about ring topology we have already discussed that topology means the layout of a computer network that is how our computer network is physically or logically is laid out so uh, we have already discussed that there are four types of uh, topologies number one is bus topology then we have got ring topology and which will be a topic of our discussion today and uh, we have got star topology and we have got mesh topology so let's start our discussion on ring topology what is a ring topology as the name suggests in ring topology all the nodes that is your computers your server or your devices are connected to each other and they form a ring so let's suppose uh, we have got uh, uh, three computers computer 1 is connected to computer 2 computer 2 is connected to computer number 3 and computer number 3 is connected to our server computer number 4 but if we see that uh, our server is connected to two neighbors to its two neighbors computer number 1 and computer number 3 so in the ring topology every computer or every node if i would say is connected to two devices which are its neighbors for example uh, so our uh, computer 1 is connected to our server right and it is also connected to computer number 2 so it's a very simple form of uh, topology and every computer is connected to two of its neighbors and they form a ring so uh, this uh, in this scenario in this case in this picture we have a physical ring because it's a perfect ring if you see and the data uh, will also flow in this example uh, logically in the ring so it's a physical as well as logical ring topology or layout or ring network so we can say that it's a it is a ring layout ring topology or more commonly we call it as a ring network so how does the data flow in ring topology so in ring topology uh, data is flown uh, in form of packets so let's suppose our computer number one would like to communicate with our computer number three and we have already seen that we have got a server and we have got computer number two so if our computer number one would like to send some data to computer number three then the data could flow either way from one to three or from this direction or this direction but in this case let's suppose that the data or the packet uh, flows from computer one to computer two computer two receives the packet and it says no it's not for me and then it goes to computer number three and computer number three gets the data and then it honors the request but at the same time our packet may flow to computer number four and then it would come to computer number one and here it would 
be terminated. So in the ringed network, our packet flows from the source and its final destination is also the source. But in the meanwhile, it will be reached to its intended computer. So what are the disadvantages of a ring network? Is that there is a single point of failure. For example, if there is a break in the wire, then our ring is affected. The communication within the ring is connected is affected. And even if one of the node fails, then the communication is also affected. Uh, but uh, the main uh, source of failure is basically the wire which are connecting, which is connecting all the computers or the nodes. So to tackle this problem, we have got a ring topology in which we have got a ring in which let's suppose a data flows in a clockwise position and at the same time we have a counter ring in which the data flows in the other direction. So if let's suppose our external ring fails, the data would be able to flow using the internal uh, internal ring so friends nowadays we do not usually use ring topology uh, because it's uh, and now it's uh, it is an older type of topology nowadays uh, uh, for quite some time we have been using star topology and we would be discussing about star topology in our next tutorial. Thank you very much for joining me on ifactorner.com video tutorials. If you would like to know more about star topology or ring topology or bus topology, then please visit ifactorner.com. I see you in the next tutorial. Take care. Bye. Hey guys, welcome to your 15th ifactorner.com computer networking tutorial. And today we are discussing about star topology. So guys, if I ask you, what is a star topology? Your answer would be, hey, I fact no, star topology is a topology which is based on a star. It forms a physical star. And uh, I would say that your answer is right. A star topology is a topology which is laid out uh, uh, in a form of a star and uh, in the star topology usually there is a central connecting device central communication device and all the computers your laptop your desktop uh, your server and uh, your another laptop and uh, another desktop, they are all connected to that central device and uh, they form a physical star. So that is why it is called a star topology. So that central communication device can be a hub which is a dumb device, a switch, a router, and so on. So this is a dumb device and this is a genius device like me. This is an intelligent device like us. So friends, how does a hub work? So, uh, in, in the simplest form, let us suppose we have got uh, five pieces. So, there, 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 there can be a lot of other pieces. But let's suppose that these pieces are connected to a hub. Why do we call hub a dumb device? Because if PC number one would like to send um, a message to PC number two, then that message 
would go to a hub and the hub would send that message to PC number 2, to PC number 3, to PC number 4. The copy of the message is being sent to all the devices and even in some cases it would send the sending device its own message. So that's why it is called a dumb device because it just replicates the messages, message and uh, copies the message and send it to all the connected devices in the network. And uh, uh, in place of hub nowadays we either use a switch or a router. So let's take an example of a router. So when we have got uh, devices connected to a router, then if PC number 1 would like to send message to PC number 2, then the router would only send that message to PC number 2 and would ignore the message, uh, would not send the same message to all other nodes in the network. And uh, nowadays we usually use uh, star networks in our homes. For example, we have got an internet connection and we have got usually uh, got a triple play router and that router is connected to our desktop. So we can share internet connection and we that router is also connected or our laptop is connected to our router and we can share uh, that uh, internet connection and we can communicate with our desktop and let's suppose that connection is also share is also connect uh, we, our uh, is also connected to our tablet or iPad and that can also communicate with the other devices on the network and the, the, this is the most uh, uh, common type of a topology that is being used in our homes. So in our homes we use the star topology and in bigger offices we use a starburst topology. So what is a starburst topology? It's the combination of a star and a burst topology. So let's suppose we have got a, a router or a switch and with it we have got six, seven, eight, nine, ten devices attached to it. And we have got a, 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 an other a small router or a switch and with it uh, we have got few devices attached. Now we can attach both of these routers to form a bigger network using the bus type structure, using the backbone and that's why it is called the star bus topology because smaller networks or smaller parts are using the star topology and to connect the central communication devices we use the backbone which is the part of the bus topology and that is how we use star bus topologies. So what are the advantages of a star topology? So uh, the advantage is that it is very simple to set up. We usually need the central communication device and plus some wires and uh, that's how we can set up our star network or a star topology. And uh, usually if we would like to upgrade our system, our network, then we can just uh, uh, put a uh, a bigger device, central communicating communication device. For example, we had a hub and we just upgraded it to the router uh, uh, with 20 ports and plus 40 wireless ports or infinite wireless wireless ports. Then this is how easily we can upgrade our system. And uh, what are the disadvantages of the Star Network? Is that it has the single point of failure. That is, if our central communication device, that is a hub or a switch or a router, does not work or it fails, then 
whole of our network is down. So we have a single point of failure. In this case, and uh, uh, but if one of our devices is not working or we just switch it off because it's our company laptop and we just take it back to our uh, office, then it will not affect the communication of the other devices attached to the communication device. So that is one of the advantages of Star Network and that is why we are using Star Topology nowadays. Next, we would be discussing about mesh topology. So, see you guys in the next tutorial. Take care. Bye. Hello, hello, hello. What's up, guys? I welcome you to ifactioner.com computer networking tutorial series. And today, we are going to discuss about OSI model. This is the part one of OSI model tutorial and this is tutorial number 17 in computer networking tutorial series by ifactner.com. So guys, what does OSI model means? OSI stands for Open Systems Interconnection. Open systems interconnections so uh, a little history about OSI model back in 1970s there were different manufacturers of computers and uh, computer networking and they all were using their own protocols to communicate between two devices. But the problem was that if a system was developed by IBM, then it could not communicate with the system developed by Macintosh because there were no standard protocols available and there were no standards available to communicate between different computers by different manufacturers. So all the manufacturers decided to develop a common set of standards for communication. So they came up with the idea of OSI. OSI stands for Open Systems Interconnection and OSI model is a conceptual model. So it's not a physical model, uh, but it's a conceptual model which explains how two computers or two or more devices or two or more nodes on a computer network communicate with each other and how does a communication system works. So this conceptual model divides the, the similar communication functions into seven logical layers. And now we will discuss about those logical layers. So as I have told you that OSA model has seven logical layers and those layers are Number one, or you can say it's number seven. I will tell you why do I say it number seven because they define it this way. Number one is the application layer. And this layer directly communicates with the user via the different applications. For example, your internet browser, Microsoft Word, or different applications which you use to communicate are the examples of the applications. And these applications, they communicate with the application layer. And application layer, under the application layer, we have got 
and other layer which is called presentation layer. The work, the main purpose of the presentation layer is to convert the data from machine readable format into the human readable format or application readable format. That is why it is called the application presentation layer. And under the presentation layer, we have got a layer called session layer. The main purpose of the session layer is to establish a secure connection or to establish a establish, maintain and terminate the connection between two nodes on the network. And we will be discussing about these layers in detail in the next section. And uh, under the session layer, we have got another layer which facilitates the session layer and that layer is called the transport layer. And the main purpose of transport layer is to reliably sending of data packets between nodes. So its main purpose is to send the data packets between two nodes. So it converts the data into packets and its main purpose is to send them reliably to the other node. And uh, under the transport layer, we have got a layer called network layer. I would like to tell you one thing, uh, friends, that TCP, the Transmission Control Protocol, works roughly on transport layer. And the IP protocol works roughly on network layer. And the main purpose of network layer is to provide means of transferring valuable lengths of or valuable length of data which is called datagrams. So it provides means to transfer the data. And under the network layer we have got data link layer and as the name suggests the main purpose of data link layer is to provide reliable link between two nodes in the network and on the bottom we have got physical layer which deals in bits the it, it is it deals with the electrical and physical specifications of the data connection so we have got physical layer at the bottom or uh, uh, on number one we have got physical layer then we have got data link layer then we have got network layer, then we have got transport layer. On top of transport layer, we have got session layer. On top of session layer, we have got presentation layer. And on the top, we have got application layer, which communicates with our applications and we interact with. So application layer is communicating with us and presentation layer is communicating with the application layer, session layer is uh, communicating uh, with presentation layer and so on. Uh, so how do we remember which layer comes uh, uh, on the top and which layer comes on the bottom? So there is a very easy way to remember it and uh, that is to remember a sentence. For example, we can say that all people should take should take 
new daily pill now you can make your own sentence to remember it so a stands for application layer p stands for presentation layer s stands for session layer and this is the most easy way easiest way to remember it t stands for yeah transport layer n stands for network layer d stands for data link layer and p stands for physical layer so this is uh, uh, an easy way to remember which layer comes first on number three again number three number four number five number six and number seven so friends thank you very much for joining me for this introductory tutorial on osi model and we will be continuing our discussion on osi model on in our next tutorial if you would like to know more about networking or osi model then please visit ifractional.com take care bye bye hey 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 welcome back guys and girls to computer networking tutorial series by ifractional.com and we will continue our discussion on osi model and now we will discuss in detail uh, about different layers in osi model so as i have already told you that the first layer uh, which uh, or the last layer which uh, communicates directly with the applications and the users is called the application layer so it interacts directly with the users and with the applications and uh, other tasks of the application layers are to identify communication partners to determine uh, resource availability and to synchronize the communication but just to make it simple let's remember that uh, application layer is the layer which directly interacts with the user and the applications and the application layer divides the uh, divides the uh, message into pdus and pdus stands for protocol data units protocol data units and it hands hands over those pdus to the layer under it and that layer is called presentation layer presentation layer in the osi model and uh, the presentation layer is also called the syntax layer i will tell you why do we call it a syntax layer or a data formatting layer it is called the syntax layer or data formatting layer because it transforms data in the form that applications accept so the presentation layer presents the data to the application layer and then the application layer gives it to the application and we can read the messages if we are receiving a data and if we are sending a data then the application layer hands over the data to the presentation layer and the presentation layer converts that data or format that data into a format that computers understand so the main purpose of the presentation layer is to present the data and it also 
in addition to presenting the data it also encrypts or decrypt the data because the communication on the network has to be secured so the data has to be secured it has to be encrypted and on the receiving it and it has to be decrypted and it is the responsibility of the presentation layer to do it under the presentation layer we have got session layer and what are the responsibilities of the session layer in OSI model the main responsibility of a session layer is to establish a session or to establish a connection between the two nodes so it does establishes a connection between the two nodes between the two communication nodes uh, in addition it also maintains that connection and when the communication has been done it terminates that connection so it establishes manages and terminates the connection between the local and the remote device or a node and it it is also the responsibility of the session layer to secure the session so it also secures the session on number four we have got transport layer and uh, as I have I have already told you that our TCP protocol transmission control protocol it works on the transport layer and the main responsibility of the transport layer is to reliably send data packets between nodes so it converts the data into packets packets are converted into data on the transport layer and then those packets are reliably sent to the remote computer and it is the responsibility of the transport layer to do it in addition it also correct the sequence of the packets and it is the responsibility of the transport layer is to send the packets without errors so if the transport layer converts the packets and sequence them as number one number two number three at the source computer then it is the responsibility of the transport layer on the receiving or the remote computer to sequence those packets in the same order and to check for errors so we have already discussed that uh, the packets on internet they go from different routes and when they are received on the router then they are sequenced again so, so it is uh, basically the work of transport layer to transport the packets and then we have got our network layer and uh, the internet protocol works on the network layer and uh, the transport layer is the connection oriented layer and the protocols working on the transport layer are called the connection oriented protocols because they need a connection between them and the protocols for example IP protocol internet protocol working are work, works on network layer and they are connectionless protocols and what is the main purpose of the network layer the main 
purpose or the main responsibility is to provide means of transferring variable, variable lengths of data sequences which are called datagrams. So its main purpose is to provide means for the transferring of the datagrams from one node to another node and it is not a reliable connection it's a unreliable connection and it is the responsibility of the transport layer to connect to to do the reliable transportation and uh, <coughs> underneath the network layer on number six or number two you could say is the data link layer and as the name suggests the main purpose of the data link sorry about the mistake data link layer is to provide a reliable link between two nodes so to provide a reliable data link between two nodes and it also detects and corrects the errors that may occur at the physical layer and at the data link layer we assign or uh, the system assigns MAC of physical addresses to the packets and our switches work at the data link layer and usually uh, our routers work at the network layer and on the bottom we have got physical layer in the OSI model and the main responsibility of the physical layer or the main purpose is to determine the electrical and physical specifications of the data connection as the name suggests it works on bits and its main purpose is to determine or to specify the electrical and physical specifications of the data connection and it also defines relationship between device and the physical transmission medium so it also defines the relationship between the laptop and the copper wire and it also uses the protocol to establish and terminate our connection so this is the main purpose of the uh, physical layer so we have got seven layers in our OSI model and those layers work at the source and at the remote computers. So if we send an applic if we are using an application, then that application had, uh, gives that data to the application layer. Application layer gives that data to the presentation layer. The presentation layer converts the data into the machine readable format and gives it, gives it to session layer. The session layer establishes the connection and gives the data to network layer. Uh, all people, oh, sorry, the session layer gives it to transport layer. The transport layer uh, is responsible for sending the data securely to the host computer and it assigns the TCP uh, address to those packets and uh, underneath the transport layer we have got network layer the network layer assigns IP address to those packets and uh, underneath the transport layer we have the network layer we have got data link layer which assigns physical address to those packets and then the physical layer sends the data to the uh, remote computer at the receiving end 
the physical layer converts uh, gives the data to the data link layer and the data link layer under, uh, reads the MAC address or the physical address of the device and if it's intended for it, uh, it then it gives the uh, packets to the network layer which uh, uh, reads the IP address and gives it to transport layer uh, uh, and the transport layer reads the TCP and gives it to the session layer and the session layer gives it to the presentation layer which converts the data into the application readable format and then gives it to the application layer which is interacting with the user at the receiving end through via the application and this is how a communication on network is done. So remember friends that OSI is a conceptual framework and uh, at the physical level the communication might be done at in a different manner. So thank you very much friends for watching this tutorial. If you would like to need, if you would like to know more about networking and OSI model, then please visit ifectner.com. So take care and bye bye. See you next time. Bye. What's up guys? Welcome to your 19th computer networking tutorial and today we are going to discuss about wireless LAN, wireless local area networks. So guys, we, are, we will be going to discuss about two local area networks. Uh, on the first place, we will be discussing about ad hoc networks, how can we establish ad hoc networks. And uh, at the second place, we will be discussing about an IEEE uh, uh, 802.11x standard based networks. And here, X stands for A, B, G, and N. We are going to discuss about different flavors of 802.11 a, B, G, and N networks. And uh, in the end, we will be discussing about the security standards of IEEE 802.11 networks. So let's start our discussion of ad hoc networks. So ad hoc wireless LANs are those uh, LANs which do not require any router or access point. You just need two laptops with wireless cards and you can establish your ad hoc networks through Windows networking. So you just need to select ad hoc net networks and establish the connection between two or more uh, devices and you are ready to go. Uh, an example of ad hoc network is uh, that if you are in a meeting and if you would like to exchange the data between two or more computers, then you can easily establish an ad hoc networks on ad hoc uh, basis and then disassemble that network. So that is uh, all for the ad hoc networks. And now we will continue our discussion of IEEE 802.11x based local area networks. Uh, so uh, if I ask you what is a wireless network, wireless based network, uh, the first thing that comes to our mind is that the wireless network has got some kind of a central device, for example, our wireless router, and all the other computers are connected that device or wireless router. So this wireless router in networking term may be called as access point. Access point or wireless network is the center point of wireless based 
networks. <coughs> so it is wireless router. And uh, we have got nodes, or we may call them as stations. So your laptop, your desktop, your mobile phone, your tablet PC, your smart TV may be a part of a wireless network. And these wireless networks communicate wirelessly in air and they use different channels to communicate. And the band or the frequency which is commonly used for wireless communication in home-based and small office-based networks is around 2.4 gigahertz. And all, how can we identify these uh, routers or access points? For that, we need SSID. SSID stands for Set Service Set Identifier. It is actually the name of your wireless network. It is 32 characters unique name. SSID differentiates one LAN from another, one WLAN or wireless LAN from another, and uh, all the uh, stations, uh, they try to access that uh, router or more than one router with the same SSID, that is service set identifier. So guys, I have already told you that there are different standards of A22.1.1 network. That is, there are different flavors of A22.1.1 network. And the first uh, flavor which was introduced uh, was A22.11A. And usually, the networks which were based on A22.11A uh, uh, standard operated on 5 gigahertz frequency. So I have told you that nowadays these networks are operating on 2.4 gigahertz uh, uh, frequency, but uh, 802.11a uh, used to operate on 5 gigahertz frequency and it could support the data transfer rate of 54 megabits per second. But as it was not compatible uh, with other networks operating at 2.4 gigahertz or uh, near uh, to 2.4 gigahertz uh, frequency, therefore it is not being used presently. And then, uh, based on the problems with 802.11 network, uh, IEEE introduced a new standard that was based on that was called 802.11b uh, standard and it uh, operates on 2.4 gigahertz frequency and this 2.4 gigahertz frequency is called ISM. ISM stands for Industrial Scientific Medical Band. So uh, we as a small office or uh, in our network and our homes we can use these frequencies of ISM or industrial scientific medical band frequencies. Uh, all right, so uh, friends, and uh, uh, this uh, standard used to support and is still supporting in some scenarios one megabits per second transfer data rate to 5.5, and yeah, of course, 54 megabits per second transfer rate. And uh, one more thing that uh, these wireless networks uh, that are using 802.11x standards, they use uh, channels, different channels to operate. And uh, some of the most common channels are channel number one. When you open your uh, interface of your router, then you can select either channel number one, channel number 6 and channel number 11. These are the channels which are most widely used and these uh, are usually non-congested channels. 
and to you know, friends, uh, uh, channel number one operates at 2.412 gigahertz per uh, gigahertz frequency. Channel number six uh, operates at 2.437 gigahertz frequency, whereas channel number 11 uh, operates at 2.462 gigahertz uh, frequency. And uh, then, uh, as uh, uh, we needed uh, a more uh, reliable standard, therefore IEEE introduced 802.11.11G uh, standard and it got very popular. It also operated at, uh, sorry, 2.4 gigahertz frequency and it could support 54 uh, megabits per second. But as we needed more and more uh, uh, bandwidth intensive uh, applications, therefore IEEE introduced 802.11N standard in 2009. And this standard uh, uh, routers working based on these standards can support from 54 to 600 megabits per second uh, data transfer rate. And the trick is that these uh, routers uses MIMO uh, based uh, uh, standard that is multiple input, multiple output. That is, these routers use different antennas at the same time to transfer data, multiple input and multiple output. And nowadays we are using either 802.11 N standard, 802.11 G standard. And uh, if we have got uh, a network which has got multiple access points that is uh, that it has either got multiple routers or multiple repeaters and a router then these types of networks are called infrastructure based wireless local area networks infrastructure local area networks infrastructure wireless local area network and uh, uh, how do these uh, wireless uh, local area networks work? Uh, these work based on CSMACA standard. That uh, is carrier sense multiple access with collision detection. Carrier sense that it sense uh, that uh, uh, if uh, it can send the data and uh, it tries to avoid collision, collision avoidance. So now let's discuss in detail how these uh, networks operate. Let us suppose we have got two laptops in our network and this is a center and the center would like to send the data to the receiver. So how will it operate? The center will send a request that is request to send and if the receiver can receive the data then it will send a signal CTS that is clear to send so it tells the sender that it can send the data and the sender then sends the data and once the data is received the receiver sends the acknowledgement that data has been received so this is how wireless based networks operate. And now a little bit about WLAN security. There are three standards. If you open your uh, uh, router interface, then you can see that you have got WEP, WPA, and WPA version 2. WEP stands for Wide Equivalent Frequency, but uh, it, pro uh, it proved to be uh, a uh, very weak standard and nowadays we do not usually use WP.